Hey, future scientists. Welcome back to Learn With Mike, where science is fun, simple, and all around us. So, have you ever seen that big, colorful chart in your science class called the periodic table and thought, uh, what is that thing? Well, today we're going to crack the code behind it, and by the end, you'll know exactly what all those letters, numbers, and colors mean. Pretty cool, right? All right, so what is the periodic table? It is like this giant map, but instead of countries, it shows elements. Think of elements as the basic ingredients that make up everything in our universe. Like seriously, the air you breathe, the water you drink, your phone, your pets, even you, all made of elements. So what's an element exactly? Well, it's a pure substance made of just one kind of atom. For example, oxygen helps you breathe. Gold makes shiny jewelry. Carbon is in everything that's alive. Each one has its own name, symbol, and number. Like a special ID card. Now, who came up with this genius idea? It was Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, a Russian scientist who created the first periodic table in 1869. He organized the elements by their atomic number, which is the number of protons each atom has. And guess what? He even predicted elements that hadn't been discovered yet. He was such a smart cookie. Now, let's talk about how the table is set up. Because it's not just random boxes. So you've got horizontal rows, which are called periods, and vertical columns, which are called groups or families. Elements in the same group act kind of the same. They're like family members with similar traits. Oh, and here's a fun fact. Elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic number. That's just the number of protons inside the atom. Now let's break down one entry. We will go with lithium. Here's what that means. 3 is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. Li is the chemical symbol. Lithium is the name of the element. 6.991 is its atomic mass, which is the average mass of the atom. Remember to round it when you use it for finding number of neutrons. So lithium has three protons, and its atomic mass tells us it's pretty light. Let's clear up these two terms one last time before moving forward. Because they can sound a bit confusing. Atomic number and atomic mass. Atomic number is just the number of protons in an atom. That's it. Think of it like the atom's ID card. It tells you exactly who it is on the periodic table. Atomic mass, on the other hand, is the average mass of the atom, and it depends on how many protons and neutrons are packed inside the nucleus. So basically, atomic number equals protons. Atomic mass equals protons plus neutrons. Moving on, remember when we learned about atoms? Yeah, I have that tiny thing with a little nucleus in the center, kind of like the yolk inside an egg. Inside that nucleus, we've got protons and neutrons just hanging out together. And spinning super fast around them are electrons. They move so quickly that scientists can't even say exactly where they are. We just know they hang out in certain zones called energy levels or shells. You can think of it like planets orbiting around the sun. Some are close, some are far, and the closer ones feel a stronger pull. It's the same with electrons. The ones close to the nucleus have low energy, and the ones farther away have more energy. So, how many electrons fit in each level? There's actually a little formula for that. 2n squared, where n is the level number. So, level 1 has 2 electrons, level 2 has 8 electrons, and level 3 has 18 electrons and so on. Let's use zinc as an example. It's one of those shiny metals we use in batteries and coins. Zinc's atomic number is 30, and its atomic mass is 65.38, which we can round to 65 to keep things simple. So here's what that means. It has 30 protons, because the atomic number always tells us that. Now remember, the atomic mass is protons plus neutrons. So, to find the number of neutrons, we just subtract the atomic number from the atomic mass. 65 minus 30 equals 35 neutrons. And since the number of protons always equals the number of electrons in a neutral atom, that means zinc also has 30 electrons zipping around its nucleus. Okay, now comes the fun part. The element families. 
Yup, just like humans have families, elements do too. And each family has its own personality. Let's meet them one by one. First up, the alkali metals. Let's look at them in the table. These guys live in the first column and are super reactive. Like touch water and go boom kind of reactive. They're called alkali because when they react with water, they make alkaline solutions, which are basic, not acidic. They're soft, shiny, and love attention. You'll find sodium and potassium here, both total drama stars of the table. <laughs> Next door are the alkaline earth metals. These are like the alkali metals chill cousins. Still reactive, but not too crazy. You'll find calcium. That helps build strong bones and teeth and magnesium, which keeps your muscles working. They might not explode, but they definitely keep things strong and stable. Now, right in the middle, we've got the transition metals. These are your classic metals, shiny, strong, and super useful. They build bridges, coins, wires, and jewelry. Think iron, copper, zinc, and gold. They're like the builders and protectors of the chemical world. See those two rows that look like they fell off the bottom of the table? They're not random. Those are the lanthanides and actinides. Lanthanides are used in things like magnets and lasers, and actinides include some radioactive elements like uranium, which can release a lot of energy. All right, see that staircase line running across the table? That's where the metalloids hang out. They're like the middle kids. Not full metals, not full non-metals. They can act like either, depending on the situation. The most famous one? Silicon. The heart of computers and phones. Without silicon, you couldn't even be watching this video. Okay, now let's meet the post-transition metals. Think of these as the softer, quieter cousins of the heavy transition metals. They hang out just to the right of the big metal block. And they're kind of interesting because they're metal A, but not as tough or shiny as iron or copper. You know, not the show-off metals. Some examples are aluminum, gallium, indium, tin, thallium, lead, and bismuth. You'll see these metals used a lot around you. Aluminum in cans and frames, tin in cans and solder, and lead, which used to be in paints and pipes, that we're careful with now. What makes them special? They're usually softer and have lower melting points than the transition metals. They can be malleable, so you can bend or shape them, and they often form useful alloys. That means mixed metals that do a specific job, like making something stronger or more flexible. So yeah, not the flashiest group, but super useful. Think of them as the handy helpers of the metal world. Now. Let's check out the non-metals, and these guys are the total opposite of metals. They're not shiny, don't conduct electricity well, and many of them are gases. But here's the thing, they're essential for life. Oxygen helps us breathe. Carbon builds all living things. So, yeah, they might not sparkle, but they're super important. Next to them, we've got the halogens. And, oh boy, these ones are wild. They love to react with metals to make salts. In fact, halogen literally means salt former, like sodium and chlorine. They team up to make table salt, also known as NaCl. Tasty, right? And finally, up the coolest crew of all, the noble gases. These guys don't like to mix with anyone. They're stable, chill, and super independent. That's why we call them noble. You've probably seen them before. Helium in balloons, neon in bright signs, and argon in light bulbs. They just float around, minding their own business. And you know what's even cooler? Scientists are still discovering new elements. There are a few at the end of the table that we don't fully understand yet. They're like new characters waiting to join the story. Science never stops growing. And neither does our periodic table. So, let's do a quick recap. Today, we explored the periodic table, what it is, how it's organized, and what all those little symbols actually mean. We also discovered that each group of elements has its own unique personality, from the dramatic alkali metals to the calm and collected noble gases. Every element plays a role in the universe's big story. Pretty amazing, right? That's it for today, folks. Thanks for hanging out with me. 
I'll see you in a brand new episode next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss a science adventure. And remember, always stay curious.